Hey guys, today we're going back to a time when AMD would sell processors that you could unlock the cores. So if you were really lucky, you could buy a cheap dual core processor and it would unlock into a full quad core. So in this video, we're going to check out a few CPUs that I have that unlock and we will also talk about how you can identify the right CPU models. We will have a look at how to actually unlock them. We've got benchmarks comparing the performance with two, three and four cores. We will also look at power draw results, go over the test system. There is some gameplay and at the end, a conclusion. So here we have one of the processors that unlocks. This is a Phenom 2, a dual core, the 555 Black Edition. And I got this processor back in the day. And what you need to look out for is that AC marking here. That indicates that this is based on the Deneb core, which is the proper quad core CPU with six megabytes of level three cache and any dual core and triple core processor with that AC indicator here in the third line on the CPU is harvested from the Deneb core and you have a good shot at unlocking this into a full quad core. And the second CPU, this is a triple core. This is the uh, B77 and we also have the AC marking here. Both of these fully unlock into a quad core. I found a really good resource that shows all the processors that can be unlocked in a table. Uh, it's on cpuworld.com and I will put a link down below in the description. So unlocking AMD processors, this was all about yield. So if AMD had a processor with one or two faulty cores, they could still sell it as a dual core or as a triple core. Later, however, as yields improved, um, AMD was forced to sell you a actually fully working quad core processor. So it depended on marketing demands more than yields. And it also created a bit of excitement just reading about unlocking CPU cores in uh, forums and on websites. Yeah, it was definitely very interesting. And that was the reason why I got this dual core 555 back in the days. And luckily it fully unlocked. So the value was terrific. Unfortunately, from the outside looking at the chip, you can't tell if one of the cores are actually uh, defective or if all cores are working. So the only way you can find out is buying the CPU and unlocking it and seeing what happens. Unlocking the processor is quite straightforward. On this MSI motherboard, you just go into the BIOS and there's an option to unlock the cores. You just toggle that, restart the machine and if your processor fully unlocks, that's it. You go into Windows and you should see all four cores being active. I've got a motherboard. This one is an Asus and this one actually has a core unlocker switch. So you would shut the machine down and then flick the switch, turn it on and all the cores would be unlocked. And here we have a look at some of the parts used in this test. So first up, we've got a motherboard from MSI. This is the 870A G54. I got this motherboard from AliExpress. I will put a link down below in the description. It sells for around 35 to $40. Also the two processors, I will put a link down below in the description as well. You're looking at $13 for the dual core and around $20 for the triple core. I'm also using some RAM from China and usually I don't recommend doing that because there's often uh, fake RAM going on, but these ones are legit and they come in retail packing. So you can get an eight gigabyte RAM kit for around $40 or a 16 gig kit, which I'm using for the reviews uh, for around $75. Also links down below in the description. And for the video card, we're using a Radeon RX 570 with four gigabyte of memory. And here we have a look at some benchmarks. So orange is the dual core, red is the triple core, and blue is the quad core. And we can see some nice scaling. For whatever reason, Night Rate didn't like the AMD processor. Moving on to the next benchmark. This is a Cinebench R15 on the left. Then we've got CPU set the multi benchmark. And then on the right side, CPU set the single threaded result. And once again, we can see really nice scaling. 
And here we have some PowerDraw results running Cinebench and we can see between uh, two cores and four cores has a difference of around 30 watts. So really not that massive. Moving on to our first game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. And yeah, I didn't get a result for the dual core. It would just take forever to load and I would get some weird graphical corruption. And we can see once again between triple and quad core, we can get a nice boost in performance. The next game, Strange Brigade, using the Vulcan API. Very optimized game, but there is a limit to how much you can optimize. Uh, and the dual core is just not sufficient uh, these days. And we can still see a nice performance boost going from three to four cores. The next game, Tomb Raider, that's an older one. So once again, we can see uh, nice scaling going from two to three to four cores. But this is a game that is still playable with two cores being a, a bit older. And here we have Crisis running at DirectX 10 with 64 bit. The dual core is a little bit weaker, but uh, it's kind of the same. There's not much of a difference. So this game doesn't really scale well with multiple cores. It's all about having high IPC. And we've got another game, F1 2015, very demanding on the processor. We're just getting over 60 FPS with the quad core, but the triple core is not enough to achieve that. And now we're going to have a look at some games. Enjoy the party. When you're ready, just grab a hold of the bird over there. It'll take you upstairs. Help. The yacht crew is clear. The target's private deck. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but according to Intel, Ritter is another enforcer who picks his own cabin crew. So tread carefully. The target will spot you if you get too close. To eavesdrop on his conversation, try and find a way to blend in. Jump. Hey, some good news. I'm picking you up much more strongly now. I suggest you search the huts for weapons and equipment. Stay low and avoid contact if possible. You don't really want to alert the car. Why do I always have to? Why is it always me? 
So let's summarize the performance in newer games like Doom or Strange Brigade and Rise of the Tomb Raider, we're seeing pretty decent performance. Now Hitman, that game struggles a little bit with many NPCs uh, running around, but that is something we see across the Core 2 and other platforms as well. We are getting below 60 FPS in this game, but uh, this is with all the details maxed out and we're still getting better performance than most consoles. I was a little bit surprised with the older games. In uh, Far Cry, for example, we would get uh, yeah, a few dips uh, below uh, on the outside areas of the level. And in the Need for Speed game, we also saw dips below 60. Now, that was not the case on the Core 2 pl platform. Um, that kind of had a locked 60 FPS frame rate in that game. So that surprised me a little bit. Um, could be better optimization for Intel or the Core 2 having higher IPC. Not sure, but definitely something I will keep uh, an eye out for future videos. And Crisis Warhead, of course, that game is not really optimized and struggles on this machine. So what we're seeing here is it's definitely worth unlocking these processes, especially in the newer games that can take advantage of multiple threats, we saw a nice performance boost. However, older games, for example, uh, Crisis or Tomb Raider, there's not much of a difference or the performance is high enough already that it doesn't matter how many cores you have. Now, what is appealing still to this day about these processes is the cheap prices. Um, unfortunately, a high clocked quad core phenom they aren't that cheap, they still go around uh, $30 or more, especially once you uh, get one of the higher clocked ones be past 3.2 gigahertz, whereas the dual and triple core processors, they're around $15 or $20. Having said that, there's no guarantee that they unlock, so it is still a bit of a gamble. This is the second video using the AM3 platform, and once again, it was a really pleasant experience perfect stability, I didn't have any issues and in terms of performance it feels very similar to the uh, Core 2 platform but a little bit concerned in some of the older games uh, there might be a bit of a weakness with the IPC for example in Need for Speed it struggled to hold the 60 FPS so I'm not quite sure what's going on there and we will definitely look at some socket 775 stuff soon so i will make sure i'm gonna have a look at those games again and see what's happening there and do tell me what else do you want to see with the socket m3 i will definitely do something with windows xp grabbing a fast dual core processor and putting together a windows xp machine and yeah running some older games from gog because steam will uh, switch off XP support unfortunately by the end of the year so now everyone is scrambling for alternatives and yeah I'm just gonna go with GUG games they don't have any DRM and I just plug in an external hard drive and install it from there. So guys there you have it that was a look at AMD Phenom processors from back in the day that you could unlock and if you got really lucky you could pick up a cheap dual core processor and turn it into a full quad core saving a ton of money and having extremely good value. And that's it for this video guys. Let me know what you think of the Phenom processors and unlocking. Is that something you did back in the day? And as always, if you found the video interesting, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, um, share it with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.